Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur for week two of 2024. Another seven curious, interesting things I saw last week. Hopefully they're interesting. Hopefully they're innovative as well. So first one is nuclear batteries. There's been a few sort of interesting attempts at this before. This is the latest one. This is Betavolt out of China. It's a three volt battery that could last for up to 50 years or over 50 years. Uh, it uses radioactive nickel. And if you put radioactive nickel in sandwiches with, with diamonds, the radioactive nickel fires out some beta particles, it hits the diamonds and creates electricity. Apparently it's safe to put in humans, so you can put it in pacemakers, but also in electronic devices, of course. So imagine never having to charge your phone ever again. Um, all these could be embedded into you know, medical things and maybe your brain implant of the future. Um, as I say, uh, lots of people tried this before. Would you trust this in your back pocket? Not really sure, but there you go, it does exist. Uh, talking about existing, this is trying to exist. This is trying to bring back supersonic passenger travel. So uh, you may obviously know about Concorde and there's many reasons why we don't have Concorde anymore, notwithstanding the very sad accident. However, one of the big things was the sonic boom from the aircraft itself. I used to live in Cornwall and I would always hear Concorde going over and you'd hear that sonic boom as it went supersonic over the Isles of Scilly. Um, obviously, lots of governments around the world uh, banned that because it was disruptive. Now, the reason that sonic booms happens, as you're seeing actually in front of you right now, is as the, an aeroplane starts to go faster, those sound waves start to sort of um, stack up really at the beginning of the aeroplane. And as those hit the floor, they make a boom sound. Um, so what they're trying to do here with this thing is move everything backwards a little bit so that it actually staggers all of those little, that sonic signature and it creates what they're calling a sonic thud. Uh, it does 1.4 times the speed of sound, which is nearly a thousand miles an hour. Um, apparently the first prototype is going to fly this year. So that's going to be very exciting. There's a fun fact about this one as well. As you can see, the cockpit is about halfway down the aeroplane. They can't actually see where they're going. So they have a 4K display instead of a piece of glass. Um, there you go. Interesting thing. This could create chaos. I'm not really sure where this one's going. So the EU versus Apple uh, round, whatever this is right now, so um, this, uh, there's an anti-competitive sort of thing going on where because Apple own the App Store, they obviously can then create essentially their own economy. And other people are saying, well, that's unfair. We don't really get a look in App Stores, for instance. There's Epic um, have obviously had a bit of a run-in and are still doing a run-in with Apple about this. The EU have ruled that actually, no, they need to open up their platform. So what's called sideloading. So you should be able to get apps from anywhere, not just through the App Store. Now, as you might notice from Apple's website, if you've been there recently, they actually are now saying, look, hey, hey, look at all these apps that we got. It's trusted and, you know, we've made a lot of effort into making it. So they're clearly making a little bit of a case about that as well. So what does this mean? It means that in the future, if you have an iPhone, you will be able to, and this is probably starting about March, if this all goes through, you will be able to install apps from websites, third-party app stores, and you can also therefore charge uh, out to different app stores for your apps as well. So it doesn't have to go through Apple. So that might create an, a whole load of hula for Apple, especially when there are unregulated apps being installed on people's phones, causing a lot of chaos. So let's see where that one goes, but uh, that could be as early as March. I expect that to rumble on a little bit later than that, but uh, watch out for that one. That's interesting. There's a really interesting piece of data. This came from actually 2014, so it's 10 years old now, but um, Marketing Week did a really interesting article on it. It's worth, what, it's worth reading the article um, because what it's really pulling out is something that we've seen growing uh, in the background, which is novel data. So if you are a advertiser or a media person and you're trying to get third-party data to know what your customers want or how to market to them, that third-party data is being turned off through GDPR, et cetera, et cetera. So novel data sets are becoming more and more interesting. This is a really interesting study about people whose ages end in nine, i.e. 29, 39, 49, 59, et cetera. There's a really interesting thing that happens when you have a birthday or an age that ends with a nine is you do some strange things. You essentially are preparing for the big 304050. And this study found some really interesting behaviors. You are 48% more likely to sign up to your first marathon if you have a nine at the end of your, your age. Uh, you have the highest suicide rate, uh, not by a lot, but it's a couple of percent, which is too many. 18% um, men are more likely to sign up to an affairs website, ashleymadison.com. Uh, you will be three minutes, 24 seconds faster on average running a marathon, and you're most likely to be in search of purpose as well. So I love those kind of interesting dynamic 
always changing data sets that you never know what they will might mean to your media or your creative idea or your audience. So always go looking for those because there's more out there and they're quite curious and novel. I like those. Uh, this is the Rabbit R1. Now this isn't going to do away with your phone just yet, but it's definitely trying to do that. We've seen a few of these devices coming out in 2023 uh, and this is the latest one really. So this has been trained on the large action model. So I, I expect to see this year the sort of LXM, so large language models, LLM, put something in the middle of that. It's been trained on a bunch of that. This is the large action model, so the LAM. It's been trained on doing things on mobile phones. So if you ask it to book you a holiday or to cancel your subscription or book your food or whatever it might need to be, buy a train ticket, it's been trained on lots of people doing lots of actions. And therefore, all you've got to do is ask this device to do that action for you. And it's seen so many people do that, it knows what to do. So it's like a personal assistant. You interact with it with your voice. There is a camera so you can show it things. Um, other than that, it's really interesting. It's $199. Uh, I don't think it's available just yet, but they uh, had a pre-sale, uh, which I think sold out almost immediately 100,000 units. They're expecting something like 500 units. So uh, there's another uh, level of that coming on. So if you want to do that, jump onto the website and sign up for it. But this could be the future of the personal assistant in your pocket where you just ask it to do stuff. It's been trained on how to do it. It will go and do it for you. So curious, interesting device, like the form factor, like the color. Uh, this is a really interesting piece of research. This comes out of uh, Meta and the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, this takes some audio, simply just a piece of audio, and what it can then do is using an avatar, so these people have been scanned in 3D to create avatars, but what it does is it takes that audio and it can then figure out what they might be doing with their bodies, their gestures, their facial expressions, and it can basically reanimate it just from the audio. So if you've got, for instance, a podcast, you can actually reanimate your podcast in any person you really want to, um, but they'll be having realistic gestures and realistic reactions to each other as well. Some really good examples on the, the paper using you know, excerpts from you know, sitcoms like Friends and showing you how those have been recreated. But it's really interesting, like you, even if you just got a bit of audio, um, what would you do with that? I'm kind of, kind of curious about that. So it's really interesting, a little bit crude at the moment, but actually not that bad as well. You can see yeah, hands in pockets go through limbs and things like that. That's just, that, that will get better. And finally, uh, this is the AI shark. So this is actually from Game Shark. Um, I think this is hastily put together. Um, this is obviously a visual here because you can kind of see the little Game Shark just kind of bodged on there at the moment. If you go to their website, there's nothing really about it. But what they're saying is they've got an AI um, a hand controller for gaming and it learns from your actions what you might be ab about to do. So whether you're about to peek around a corner, it will automatically prepare for you to peek around a corner. So but it will sort of cheat for you just ahead of you, um, which I think is quite interesting. Whether this is real or not, uh, who knows? Um, but I thought that was quite interesting about devices that can learn the way you do things and therefore predict them and how you would interact with that interface of it's already done the thing you're about to do and whether you'd feel like that it's cheated you. Um, who knows, but that's quite interesting. There you go. Um, hopefully that was interesting. Uh, if it was, give it a like, give it a share, and uh, I'll see you next week.